high desert and the great American Southwest, I bid you all good evening or good morning, as the case may be, across this wide expanse of land and well beyond, actually, from the Tahitian and Hawaiian Islands in the west, eastward to the Caribbean and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Good morning down there. South into South America. A lot of listeners there. A lot of email, anyway. And then north to the pole and worldwide on the Internet. This is Coast to Coast AM. I am Art Bell, and this is a new week. And there are going to be some interesting things occurring tonight. And I don't mind telling you I'm a little bit nervous about them. It's easier if I talk about being nervous. Uh, those of you who uh, can see my studio cam, you know, the live cam we've got that covers me while I'm doing the show, you can probably see the beads of cold sweat pouring from my forehead. <laughs> I would like to welcome WGACAM in Augusta, Georgia. They are 580 on the dial there, and I suspect heard rather regionally. So great to have you on board uh, in Augusta, Georgia. In the second hour of the program, we will be welcoming WABC in New York. Yeah, that's right, WABC in New York. And that accounts for the beads of sweat on my forehead. I wonder, you know, in all the years I've been broadcasting, I wonder if this is, I don't think it's ever going to end. I mean, if it was going to end, it should have ended by now. I still get the cold sweats and I get the a case of the nerves and I get all messed up for a little while when I get on in a, a gigantic new market. It just happens and I can't seem to stop it. And so it will take me a few hours to level out and sort of be myself. After a few hours, I'll forget it. You know, I'll just forget it. I'll get lost in the show during the program. And then it's all gone. No problem. But for a few hours, in my mind's eye, I will picture the skyline of Manhattan. I will see, like from thirty or 40,000 feet, all the people, like little ants, running around with a million cars and millions and millions of people that are suddenly hearing me. And I'll be freaked out. So you're going to have to put up with that for a little while. And then I'll probably return to normal. At least I always have so far. Tonight, you're in for a real treat. David Adair is here. David Adair is a real rocket scientist. And he's going to follow up a little bit, or I'm going to make him follow up a little bit, on what Gene Myers had to say last week, and that was about the space islands. Remember what a cool idea that is? I should, well, I'll tell you in a minute. Anyway, David Adair is with us tonight, and uh, I know a lot of you will not have heard him before, uh, so you're in for a treat. Well, all right. Uh, as promised, let me tell you a little bit about David T. Adair. T. I wonder what the T stands for. He is a nationally and internationally recognized leader and expert in the field of space technology spin-off applications for industry and commercial use. He is a world-class presenter, keynote speaker, seminar and workshop uh, leader, and a consultant with 17 years of experience. My. Beginning at the age of 11, David built the first of hundreds of rockets, which he designed himself and test flew. At the age of 17, he won the award for the most outstanding in the field of engineering uh, sciences from the United States Air Force. How about that? For his construction of a 10-foot-tall missile weighing a half ton. <laughs> wow. At the age of 19, he designed and fabricated a state-of-the-art mechanical system for changing jet engine turbines. This machine set a world record turnaround time that still stands today by reducing the replacement time from three weeks to four and a half hours? Uh -huh. Upon completing his tour of duty in the Navy in 78, David began his own space industrial applications company called Intersect. That's I-N-T-E-R and then the acronym S-E-C-T, whatever that is, and has conducted operations and projects with it 
to the present time. So he's a real rocket scientist. David, welcome to the actually welcome back to the program. Uh, thanks, all right. Great to have you. Um, I forget where are you located. You're in Georgia or something. Uh, Atlanta. Atlanta, huh? Right. All right. Uh, good. We're on WGST right there. Um, listen, I spent some time at your recommendation last week with Gene Myers. Oh yeah. And um, probably one of the more exciting programs that I've ever had. Gene says that you can take the uh, uh, the large orange. Uh, what do you call it, David? External tank. External tank, thank you. Uh, used on the shuttle, basically, and take it into space instead of letting it crash back to Earth and put them together and literally create a tourist haven in space that would carry at any given time 300 tourists um, and that the shuttles could be built at uh, just a fraction of the current cost to take them back and forth and to help construct more of these Disneylands in space. And I spent hours talking to him about the concept. And so because of your background, first thing I want to ask you about is, is it really possible? Oh, absolutely. It's, a, it's an idea that's over 20 years old. Uh, first uh, came out with uh, Martin Marietta, the uh, contractor that is building the external tanks. And... Uh, they showed that on the technological level, it's extremely doable. Uh, that thing, um, that tank, is uh, that's a good name for it. It's built like a, an army tank. It is so strong. Uh, it holds a half a million gallons of liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen, um, and you can imagine at six pounds per gallon how much weight that thing can hold. So therefore, it's an extremely strong structure. Right. Uh, compare that to the uh, International Space Station, uh, it's like comparing a Sherman tank to a Tonka toy in strength. Well, if this is such a good idea, you know, I've, I've had some email about it, um, and people will say, if it's, a, it's such a good idea, then why haven't we done it? <laughs> it's so simple, it's, it's greed and money. Um, see, they've got right now, the aerospace companies have a cash cow money pit running in the uh, International Space Station. Uh, they're already at, uh, oh gosh, like $80 billion or $40 billion, a phenomenal amount. We don't even have a station yet. $40 billion in, into R&D, and every time they do a, an R&D design, they trash it and do another one. They pocket the money, and they keep doing that, and they don't have to produce anything. And my God, why would they want to uh, kill a cash cow like that? And uh, so it's just a... It's just a bureaucratic money pit that goes on in Washington, D.C., and they just it's, that's why they're not bothered doing it, because uh, it's just too good money right now, and nobody's raising any ruckus about it. Well, Gene sent me a follow-up fax after we did the show, you know, and he said, boy, we've got all of a sudden interest from all kinds of very important people, and what has looked like a dream for 17 or 20 years or whatever, mm -hmm. now looks like it might be a reality. And, you know, he offered me, I'll be 60 years old mm -hmm. when he anticipates he'll have it up and running. Mm -hmm. And he said, you and Ramona have two free seats. I think you and Ramona will be in for a real trip then. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you a cabin, uh, <clears throat> one on the outer ring for gravity field and then one for the inner Part, which we total weightlessness, and you can have at it. Uh, have at it is right. Yeah, we talked a little bit about that. <laughs> um, you think sex and space would be? You know, you know. One thing I thought of after we did the show, uh, Gene said that one advantage of being in space is that all the blood, which normally coagulates, coagulates apparently, uh, or rushes or stays toward the bottom part of your body, right, would go toward the top part of your body. That's true. Taking women who have been for years the victims of gravity. Absolutely. And making them into um, a new cup size. Uh, or Dolly Parton, but they'll, they'll be straight up because um, the gravity tug stops and then the rest of the fluid fills up in there so it tightens them up. And, um, Okie dokie. That, that part made sense to me and I thought, boy, the women are going to love that. But you know, the then, face is even better. Yeah, where your face fills in and the wrinkle goes right, the lines and wrinkles will fill up with extra blood, and what happens, it tightens skin, so it's an automatic facelift. 
but it's not permanent. When you come back, the gravity field will overtake it. But while you're there, I don't know. Do you know of any resort place you can go to, Art, that 